I was browsing Amazon about a week ago and I found this. So it appears that Roxxon is gonna be trying its hands at making a pocket knife. We're gonna do a comparison to all of these up here and see if maybe they offer something that has not been shown by any of the major brands. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at this really cool little pocket knife. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about specs. This is four and a half ounces or around 127 to 130 grams. And it's give or take around an inch wide. So it's or thick, which is the kind of the most important dimension in any of these tools. So it's not that thin. It's very much comparable in size to something like the Leatherman Free T4. So very similar in width and many other aspects. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but kind of giving you a sense of what's going on here. So first thing we have is we have a thumb stud enabled blade. Now, I don't mean to pick on Roxxon, but this is not what I would want um, out of the box. You can see it's actually moving the uh, lock bar as I shift it. And I'm gonna tighten this down at this point and see if it just came loose and if that's just the issue. And then we'll find out whether we need to do something else. So I did tighten it up. It was a little bit loose. There is a whole lot less play now. So just keep that in mind, but it still definitely deploys. It's not that it actually tightened it. It appears they needed maybe a light, slightly thicker washer on this, probably on that side. And, uh, it's just something to keep aware of. If you get this, you might have to tighten that screw and possibly this one as well using what looks like a T8. All right, so not a good, not a great start, but I kind of like that it's a nice small blade. In fact, how big is this blade? Let's go ahead and take a look. So it is, give or take, sorry, let's turn this around here. It's just under, well, just over two and a quarter inches or over a quarter, two and a quarter inches, depending on how far in it measures. So well under two and a half. That's good. That's fine. And it's actually going to fall in nicely with many blade laws out there. So all in all, that's perfectly acceptable. Now on this side, we have this little bar. And if I pull this out, this is one of my favorite things about rocks on. Look at the size of those chompers. Hold on a second, let me get some cordage. As I've said many times, I use the survivor cord because it has a bunch of extra stuff in it. It's generally a good test of the, you know, extremes. And these scissors are way above, oh my goodness, all the way at the tip even. That's very, very, very good. Um, well done. Now, these are not super, these are nice and stout scissors, so they're gonna do a little bit more intense tasks. How good is it on the tip? Eh, it would work, honestly. This might even do precision tasks. Okay, I wouldn't say great, but okay. Meaning if you're putting it down at the tip and you're actually cutting on a surface, directly, you might be able to do it with this because there's actually very, very little, actually no play. And it has a screw so you could actually adjust that and take them apart to sharpen. So everything about that is good. Everything about that is good. So far, actually, it's looking pretty solid. Now, this is a 5CR, I can't remember, five, I think it's 5CR15, which is slightly less optimal compared to 420HC, but it is way preferable to the two and three CRs that are constantly being used in these types of tools. So I appreciate that. Once again, liner lock, you're gonna have to kind of reach your finger in there a little bit to get access to it. Now on the other side, and this is the thing I absolutely adore about Roxxon, they have this deployment system. I hope they keep using it. Check that out. All three of the smaller implements are deployable. And this also is the lock mechanism. So if we open up the first item, we have a combination can opener, bottle opener, and I've used almost this, actually this is nice and sharp. Well done, sweet. Yeah, I've used these before. They're not the greatest for opening cans, but they're not bad either. 
the one that you'll find on a Swiss Army knife is wider. It'll be much more effective than this one, but still pretty good. Now, interesting about this, usually there's a flat edge coming across. This reamer all is basically a sharp chisel grind. It's almost, yeah, it's, it's very much uh, sharp. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, but I, I'm surprised that it comes to such a point. Normally these are somewhat dull. There's like a flat edge here. And then it's just to kind of keep this from dulling quick, quickly if you're drilling holes with it. But they all lock with this system. You push it back. There you go and close. And then the last thing we can deploy here is the Phillips driver. It's actually a full three-dimensional Phillips. It does not come with a kit, by the way. Mine did not come with a kit. But this will work with both the Leatherman uh, rebar holder and uh, a lot of their other adapters, like you'll find from the Roxxon Phantom. And here is a really big, nice surprise. That's actually a nice, aggressive cross-cut file. Like, actually a proper file. Well done. Good job, Roxxon. And yeah, there's some ruler markings there. I don't know how useful that's going to be. Mostly, if you're going to have a short ruler, it needs to be basically a depth gauge, right? So on a flathead, for instance, zero would start at the very end of the flathead and then climb up from there. And you can use that to measure tire, a tread depth, those types of things, right? So that would be somewhat useful. You know, where it's located, it's going to be, well, mostly for measuring things like what size nut do I have, you know, how big is, how wide is the threading on this screw, that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure you're, that's about all you're going to use. And then also, notice that right here, there's another tool here. It actually has a saw. Not too bad either. It is tapered properly, so it's thicker at the teeth than it is at the back. You can kind of tell with that. So that's all proper. Now, one thing that I did notice is you're going to have to get in there with your nails a little bit to kind of undo it. There's not that much of a cutout to close the liner lock, but it is very much doable and thankfully is not that strong. So it will absolutely be closable and there's no play, at least in mine. All right, now that's actually not a bad tool set. So funny enough, this is probably damn near close to the tool set that is on the Fieldmaster from Victorinox. Now, I am not trying to say in any way that the quality is remotely close, okay? We're talking about Victorinox here, okay? Their consistency is legendary, and these tools last a very, very long time. But by emulating a very popular and very successful tool, I think they have created something that is reasonably, you know, well-suited to being competitive. The thing is, though, the Fieldmaster is only currently about 7 to $10 more. So you really have to know whether the one-handed blade is worth it to you. That's one example. And also the one-handed deployable um, inner implements. That may actually be a major consideration between the two. And if I didn't mention it already, this thing was $30, so $29.99. It's also worth noting that the Fieldmaster comes in at 4.1 ounces, so it's going to be lighter, probably around 120 grams or a little bit less. I'll put the exact numbers if I can find them. Where this is actually much more impressive is comparing it to something like the uh, Free P4, a, three, a T4, sorry, I always get those mixed up. This has tools that I really, really like in it that this doesn't have, but the scissors on this are insanely good. And it has a saw. This doesn't have a saw at all. So that is kind of interesting for sure. Now I think, oh, there's a couple of things I missed here. It has a glass breaker on the end, and I think, no, let me see. I thought there was a tweezer, but I guess I am wrong about that. Is there no tweezer? I thought there might have been. I thought I saw one in the picture, but I don't know. I probably missed it if it is, but uh, yeah. So there's a couple extra tools here. So on here, on the uh, T4, we have the Phillips driver, small flat, reamer all, 
scissors, and then on the opposite side we have a file, which I do think the file is a little bit better, but I don't like the fact that it has a flathead on it. Um, and it has this prying tool, which is fantastic. Here's the thing. My T4 has been modified because the retention for the two springs on this single blade is so high, you really can't deploy it one-handed for most people. Like I could have done it, but this is already plenty of retention on that spring. That, if you get these two tools, you're gonna notice just how much more difficult it is to deploy this blade one-handed versus this one. So that is something I, I definitely wanna mention. One other thing though, that they have done right with the T4, actually there's, a, I mean, I like this tool, I, I will be honest, is that the pocket clip is opposite the blade, but they made the mistake on the Roxxon of putting the pocket clip on the wrong side. Now, if I have this in my pocket and I go to reach in, where would I expect the blade to be? Not there, so I have to flip it around. It's not the end of the world, but just for future reference, the pocket clip always goes opposite side of the blade. All right. So that's a little something to mention. And of course, materials. Um, blades, the 420HC is gonna be a little bit better, but only a small fraction compared to the 5CR15. The rest of the tools though are not, I don't believe are in the 5CR. I think those are all three CR. Those are gonna be substantially worse in um, longevity, the, like, how long they'll last compared to the implements in the T4. But there's one more thing we need to compare, price, right? This is currently sitting at $70 and this is sitting at $30. Okay, this is one of the few competitors one-to-one -one, that actually kind of overshadows the T4, really. The scissors are amazing, way, way better than the T4, than the T4 or any other free series scissors. It has a saw and it's about the same weight as the T4, okay, and then at half the price. So this is actually a reasonable comparison. Now the only other tool that I had in my collection that was somewhat reasonable was this one I reviewed a way back when, which has a um, straight blade, it's a little bit heavier, a little bit larger. Scissor on the outside, also quite good. And then on the inside has, um, well, a series of different tools, not as high quality as either the T4 or the Roxxon, I will say that, but was certainly comparable. So this is, I think around, was $20 if I remember correctly. So 20, 30, 40, 70. And here's, here's the comparison that's going to break everything. This is the Super Tinker, which is currently sitting at 28. In fact, cheaper than the Roxxon just showing you just how much value you really get with a Swiss made Victorinox um, multi-tool. And yeah, I think that you gotta ask a couple of questions whether you would get one or the other as they are both about the same price. This is a little bit heavier, but all the tool, most of the tools, actually are all the tools one-handed? Pretty close. Can I open up the saw one-handed? Yeah, I can do it, yeah. It's the closing, it's a little bit harder, but it's definitely doable. So technically, all of these tools are one-handed. Can I get the scissor? Yeah, I can get it. It's not easy, but I can do it. Where I can't do that with, um, with the Victorinox. So I don't know which one is better for you guys. I just wanted to make you aware that it exists. I would like to see them fix those minor problems with the blade. I would like if they make a future iteration to put the pocket clip on the correct side. But overall, the actual tool set for this is pretty awesome. And they found a way to incorporate a one-handed deployment for the inner tools, which is so well done, by the way, and doesn't involve magnets. So that may also be something to keep in mind. Either way, I will put a link for all of these down below. I like that we have such a nice distribution and I think Roxxon did a pretty decent job. I think there's, like I said, I, I, I don't think we should be seeing 3CR in any implements at this point 
we need to kind of come up above. And this is a great tool to do exactly that because I think completely in 5CR, it's way, way better. And it's genuinely competitive against something like a T4 and has some tools that even the T4 doesn't have. So pretty cool. If they nail the heat treatment, they nail the quality control, this is a very, very, very good tool at 30 and is a great consideration for anyone in the US that's looking for a one-handed pocket knife that has locking implements, which of course the Victorinox doesn't have, and one-handed implements for that matter. So really cool little tool from Roxon and definitely something you might wanna check out. As always, thanks for your time and we'll talk again soon.